Thank you so much. Well, hello there. This is Travis James Zipper here with In3 Nutrition and the Nutritional Coaching Institute. And today we got a pretty cool topic. We're gonna cover uh, what is considered metabolic liver detoxification and how it can be affecting your client's hormonal profile or even your hormonal profile for that matter. Most of this discussion today is gonna revolve around females. Sorry guys, uh, as they're the ones that have more of the liver detox issues with regards to hormones. Uh, and then also, once we get through describing it, we're gonna go through some steps on how you can correct it. Now, there are some unifying themes when it comes to balancing female hormones, and if not treated properly, can involve into terrible symptoms that can just run your life, such as PMS symptoms, fibroids, breast problems, uh, and that just name, that's just to name a few. And if those do continue to persist, they can definitely start to take over uh, a female's life. Again, sorry guys. Now, a common theme behind a majority of almost all female hormonal problems can usually be traced back to either an estrogen dominant situation, uh, high levels of inflammation, poor detox uh, capabilities, what we're talking about today, or even effective or ineffective elimination. But again, what we are gonna cover here today is poor detox capabilities. Now that we got that out in the open, uh, you might be asking or really sit down and think to yourself, what really is detox? And I get asked that a lot is people know the idea, the concept, but they really don't understand what's going on in the body. And even farther from that, most associate detoxing with uh, orthorexic people or those who are only eating super clean all the time or that uh, detoxing has to include cleanses or colonics or that even detoxing is just a marketing term or tactic that's used to sell certain books, books and supplements. And now there are some truths to those statements, but that's not what we're covering here today. What we are covering here today is metabolic detoxification in the body um, and what that actually means. What that actually means is the chemical breakdown of certain substances that go through four unique stages referred to as phase zero through phase three detoxification. And in those four super important stages, the body's cells effectively neutralize and break down toxins and then transport them to the body's secretory organs so that they can be safely excreted in the urine, sweat, tears, stool, um, so to speak. Uh, easier way to describe detoxification to others is pretty much detoxification is the making of toxins water soluble so that they can be properly excreted out of the body. On a quick little side note, there are functional medicine tests that can check if a person's liver is functioning properly. But honestly, you shouldn't have to depend on those unless all the natural means that we're gonna cover here today have been exhausted first. The following detox image is a great and easy tool that I first learned on uh, back in the day. And I'm gonna share it with you right now in the hopes of doing the same. Uh, the font is kind of small on this, uh, so we'll zoom in on some of the bigger slides. Uh, and I'm going to use these zoomed in sections uh, throughout the presentation to show you what area I'm referring to. So if you download this sheet, you can kind of see it and follow along. It just helps me clarify my points as well. So generally, there are two types of substances that need to be detoxed in the body. Things called uh, such as xenobiotics or foreign substances, such as environmental toxins and pharmaceutical drugs, this section. Uh, and then there's also something called endobiotics, natural substances that the body utilizes or creates, such as hormones. Others can include you know, used up vitamins or inflammatory uh, molecules. Endotoxins, okay, the end products of metabolism, bacterial endotoxins, exotoxins, okay, recreational drugs, prescription drugs, agricultural pesticides, that all falls into the xeno side of things. An easier way to think about it, uh, again, explaining to someone else is think xeno is external, endo is internal. There are also fat soluble toxins that get stored in our fat, and when our fat cells get broken down, they also need to be detoxified. But in order for that to happen, the body needs numerous certain nutrients uh, to make sure these phase one or phase zero through phase three detoxification are able to take place. So in going through phase one detox in this arrow number three, the certain nutrients that are uh, needed are vitamin B2, B3, B6, folic acid, or uh, preferably folate, 
uh, vitamin B12, glutathione, branched chain amino acids, so forth. Uh, those are all vital to make sure uh, these toxins can go through phase one. Now, they're listed, these uh, vitamins and nutrients are listed here, but there are also definitely times when certain people's bodies can absorb these nutrients in like a supplemental form. So that's why food is always the preferred source, uh, but there are also uh, a wide range of quality supplements. You know, a cheap supplement you get for $5 at the drugstore versus a medical grade nutraceutical from a doctor's office is usually gonna be a big difference. An example of that would be uh, vitamin B6. You can get a cheap version that's made in a lab, or you can get a, a activated form uh, called P5P. Now, that's just one example of how one nutrient uh, can be deficient, and that could be impacting a person's detox capabilities. Now, when you see most supplements on the market, when you hear detox supplements, uh, they're usually uh, being referred to uh, the phase in between uh, phase one and phase two. And these are the supplements that are marketed to the public uh, because they, they usually apply to that one phase. They're usually antioxidants or supplements. Um, and what they do is they make the toxic intermediates that are produced from phase one less toxic. I'll go into a little bit more of that in, in a minute. But yes, uh, after these toxins go through phase one of the detoxification process, they actually turn out to be more toxic. Uh, and these uh, much needed substances, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, selenium, copper, zinc, they're needed to, uh, in, a, in a sense, put a cap on those nutrients. They, they protect the body uh, from those, the, those toxic intermediates in phase one in a way of like how I said, uh, a cap, kind of like a cap on a sharp knife so that uh, it can't cut anyone if someone were swinging it around blindly. And that's why we want to make sure that a person's diet is rich in these following substances and has tons of antioxidants in it. So always aim for the rainbow of colors in your diet. So when moving on to phase two, what actually happens uh, in phase two is the actual adding of a certain type of group to that toxic oxidative substance from phase one so that it can be exported out of the body in our bile or serum and then finally out in our stool or sweat and urine. And just like in phase one and in between phase one and phase two, there are also certain nutrients that are needed for phase two. Those basic nutrients are a lot of amino acids, but glycine, taurine, glutamine, um, arginine, so forth. So again, summing this kind of up uh, to make it easy to explain, in essence, phase one takes uh, or makes a substance that's a toxin water soluble if it's not already um, and it makes that substance more toxic. Then in phase two, it takes that water soluble super toxic substance and makes it less toxic by adding something to it such as a methyl group or a sulfur group or an acetyl group. And when it goes through those stages, it goes through sulfation, glucuronidation, glutathione conjugation, acetylation. See the first part, an acetyl is acetylation. It's adding that group to it so it can be, uh, kind of render it harmless, and then it turns it into a form that the body can safely excrete out of the body. A super common problem that happens all the time is that some people have a super fast, ramped up phase one, but their phase two is a lot slower. So basically what they're doing is they're breaking things down like create crazy, but they're also creating a whole bunch of these toxic intermediates without being able to safely excrete them at the same time that they're being created. This is kind of like uh, if you a drain of a bathtub is partially clogged and the water from the spigot is cranked at full blast, what's eventually gonna happen? Well, the bathtub's gonna overflow, but in the liver's case, Instead of overflowing with water, the liver is going to overflow with these super toxic substances that end up being recirculated back into the body. That slowed down or ineffective phase two compared to a fast or ramped up phase one is where a majority of most of the detoxification problems occur, meaning that a majority of the detox protocols or fixes that are available primarily focus on speeding up phase two detoxification. Now, presuming phase one and phase two are working properly, the next thing you have to worry about is how are we getting the toxins completely out of the body? As it's super important that we poop, and 
yes, I said poop, and sweat every day as that's how these toxins get out of us for good. So constipation by itself can be a huge problem when it comes to uh, detoxifying the body. And this is a rampant problem for many people today, a majority of them being females. As constipation, it's normally caused by numerous rounds of antibiotics or people on, are on birth control. Um, and basically what both of those do is they mess up your gut flora and it results in constipation. So before anyone can detox, be it male, female, they properly first need to uh, address elimination. Because if someone's not going number two, or at least sweating every day, then they run the risk of recirculating both endotoxins and xenotoxins that are set for excretion. So it's super important to address that fact. It's always good to, to refer uh, to this image uh, as, uh, and when attempting to explain how the body's detox systems work and all the different nutrients that are needed for each phase, as it's a super easy reference to use uh, with clients and even for yourself, and I even refer to it uh, uh, frequently, and it's on, available on the web for free. Liver detoxification pathways and supportive nutrients. So uh, as we, I was describing, basically what happens is once it's able to get out of the body, it comes out in the bile and then goes out in the feces and stool or goes through uh, the serum in the blood, which is filtered through the kidneys and then out, finally out in the urine. So the next question is, you know, how do you fix or improve a dirt person's detox capacities? And uh, let's cover a few basic things here that anyone can do right out of the gate. But this is actually a really complicated uh, topic that I could have a whole nother video on. So number one, okay, a number one way of how you can improve your detox capacities is Dun, dun, dun. What a surprise. Work on the diet so that clients or yourself are getting all the right raw materials that are needed for all of the detox processes that we covered in the document. Aim to eat from the rainbow of food and don't exclude any one macro group or food group. Uh, this goes out to vegans or people on keto as your uh, vegans are missing out on vit B vitamins. You saw how important those are for liver detoxification. And keto people are looking at missing out on, on a lot of uh, antioxidants. So try to get a wide range of everything. Number two, focus on proper elimination. We discussed this a little bit uh, already, but make sure that your body is able to excrete any toxins safely. Um, and Because if, if you're not pooping or sweating every day, then you need to address that first. Uh, and you can do this by one, getting in more soluble and insoluble fiber. Um, if you do that, make sure that you increase your water intake as well as increasing fiber consumption uh, can definitely block you up if you're not getting enough water. If that doesn't work, uh, also you can try adding uh, senna and dandelion teas to the diet. And if sweating is a problem, then try jumping in a sauna. I personally love infrared saunas. They're not quite as hot as regular saunas and you sweat just as much. Number Three, okay, you want to re aim to reduce as many environmental exposures to environmental toxins as you can. Now, that's a whole other topic that we're not going to cover today, but it's important to remember that you want to start slow and slowly remove things such as plastics, non-stick cookware, non-organic or poor quality cleaning products, hygiene products, filter your drinking water and your bathing water. And those are just a few of the things that you can start to do to put you on the right path. And they're things that you can easily control. As you, when you walk outside, you can't control the air that you breathe, but you can control the air in your house by changing out your air filters, using a HEPA air filter when you sleep, things like that. Little, little costs will affect your health big time. Number four, build up your gut health, okay? You can do this by adding things to the diet such as fermented foods or proper forms of uh, probiotics and prebiotics. And again, making sure your fiber content is good and you're getting lots of color. Last one, number five, use botanical and food-based nutrients whenever you can, as it's important to include those as they're gonna help facilitate phase zero through phase three detoxification in the body. Showed you all of the examples on that one sheet of all the vitamins that are needed for each one of those stages. And if you don't have enough of even one of those, uh, that liver or detoxification processes will be slowed down. Like I said, some of the best supplements and vitamins were listed on that slide uh, that we covered, but a few additional great superfoods for detox are, you know, cruciferous vegetables, dark berries, pomegranates, Artichokes and green, drinking green tea are all easy ways to help uh, your detox capabilities. So in closing, 
I hope that this little video has kind of shined some light as to how a person's internal detox capacities are supposed to work and how and where some of the biggest problems can come from or, or originate from. And if you like this video and you want me to create more, please comment, like the page, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get notifications when new uh, videos come out, and critique me if you want. Uh, if I ramble too much or I say okay, then uh, I'll definitely try to work on it. Uh, or, you know, I always gonna give a little helpful plug there. Even better, if you wanna check out the Nutritional Coaching Institute's main page for some awesome certifications, uh, they're right up your alley, I'm sure, because they can help you become the best nutrition coach possible. Travis James Zipper with NCI and Injury Nutrition here signing off. Please have a great day and an even better week, and hopefully I'll see you again soon.